Welcome back to Thick Rift Thursday. Today there is construction going on above me, so <laughs> you might you might hear some sounds in this video, but uh, that's probably what it is. Anyway, about a month ago, I was working on a riff that was a four-year-old voice memo, and I was really excited about that riff, and I had worked on it off camera to try to come up with ideas, and I really couldn't think of anything. But last night, I was just jamming on this clean tone, and I came up with a, a, a nice chord progression that I think could go after that riff. I've got some ideas and I wanna work on them in this video, so let's get into it. Gotta tune this sh dude, damn. Yeah, so I had this chord progression that I wanted to do on this clean tone here. Big open chords. All right, let's get a scratch takedown. By the way, if you guys want to download these Archetype Nolly presets, go to architecttigerstudios.com and you can also contact me about my mixing, mastering, producing services. The link is in the description. Should I have this be just like a straight up clean guitar break and then I could bring drums and bass in and stuff? That might be the vibe, dude. I think that might be the vibe. I have it on pretty good authority that that could be the vibe. Then bring the drums in right there. Okay, so now, the easy answer to this for drums could just be like a halftime groove with like a stack, just like a genty halftime groove. But what I actually want to do is kind of like a ghost note snare. I don't know if you would technically call this like a train beat or like a train. What's it called? Yeah, like I think it's called like a train beat, like a chugga 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 chugga, like in country music. But like that's not what we're going for. Same idea, but not the same vibe. Not the same vibe, dude. I might have to do eighth notes and then copy in the sixteenth. All right, and then we gotta bring all these down because we don't want those to be super, like hit really hard. Mm, it's very inconsistent. It's very inconsistent. I think, I, I really want these to be like, pretty constant. You know, so I think I'm gonna bring them all pretty low and then pull them all up. Too hard. Too hard. Still too hard. Too soft. And then I want there to be like 30 second notes in there right before each snare, so it's like a little roll. You really can't hear those. You know what, let's make them all the same velocity, which I don't really like to do because then it can sound really programmed, but let's see what. There's a huge difference between 47 and 48. But I think 48 is the move. And let's just get these main snare hits. Bring them up. And then just like kind of pull these up every now and then, you know? And the roll there again. And then I think uh, some kicks. Let's put in the kick pattern. That's 
that's cool. And then right there, instead of the snare, I want it to be the ride symbol. Right there. So like. Bat boom. I want a kick there. I want another kick there. Maybe a light. Instead of the ride on the first one, maybe like a light crash. Velocities are pretty hard on those, so let's turn those down. A light crash is nice. And then like maybe the bell of the ride and the splash there. That could be cool. Also a little bit lower on the velocity. So like. Nice, that's cool. I like that groove a lot. And I think that is a more interesting drum part because I, I think just doing like a, a groove that's like, you know what, here, I'll edit this in to the video and I'll show you guys kind of what I think the predictable uh, move would be for a part like this. Okay, here we go. I think the predictable move for, for a, a clean part in a gent song like this would be like. Which is cool, if that's cool. And you know what, to be honest, I'll probably do that later in the song, maybe like right after this groove. But I think to kind of subvert expectations a little bit, I think a groove like this is is more interesting. And it's not that I'm doing it just to be different. I think it fits the vibe. I'm gonna put a, <laughs> when I'm editing, I'm gonna put a vibe counter up on the screen and we're gonna count how many times I say vibe. But yeah, no, I think it, it fits the vibe a little bit better. And then the bass, I kind of just want it to be holding down some low notes. Let's do a clean bass. All right, let's switch this over to clean. Cool. It's really hot though. Let's turn that down. And then down. Yeah. Cool. And then we're gonna force legato on all that. Then I think we can go into like genty bass groove thing over a clean part with a guitar lead. I think that's the natural next step. I think this serves this train groove is a nice energy builder, I think. Because we come from really high energy here. Down to pretty much nothing. And then here, we start building back up again. Then here we can go into a cool groove. That's a cool groove. Let's just copy the kick over to the bass. Not everything, it's not gonna be all held out, but we are gonna go ahead and... Stop there. Nice, very nice groove right there. That's a nice melody. I'm probably gonna edit a lot of this out, but it's taken me quite a while to like, just jam on this and develop this idea. Ooh! 
Oh sh I wish I was recording. Was that it? I think that was it. I think that was it. Oh man. Okay. That's a really nice melody. It took me a while to develop that, but I'm, I'm really happy with how that's going. One thing I like to do when I'm producing just straight like instrumental guitar music is produce the guitars like you would a vocal. So like adding harmonies on, on a left and right track to, to really make this melody pop and just give it some layers and give it some depth. Let's do octaves on the sides and then maybe hop in and out with some harmonies. Let's do the octaves first and then the last phrase will be a harmony. Good take. All right, let's get a better take of the main lead. Okay, that second half was really good. Let's see if I can get a, see if I got a first half in here that was as good as that. I mean, the take is good, but wow, I was rushing so much. What is my deal, man? It's kind of like I need to practice or something. I think I want like a little, so this is the verse for sure, but I think I want a little pre-chorus thing, maybe like four bars of a pre-chorus to get us back into the chorus. What if I take these leads that I have in the chorus? And then what if I lo-fi them right now? Let's automate that. Let's automate these in. Pull that in to like right there. And this, pull this in to like there maybe. Yeah, yeah. I just want it to hit when the chorus comes in, you know? There's a little anticipation there, so that's gonna need to scoot over a little bit, as well as this guy. So like. I like it, I like it so far. Let's see, we gotta, I mean, obviously we need more stuff going on. I think this like wavy, wavy sub bass could be cool. Let's put that in there. Yep, yep. And maybe some percussion. Let's get a snare, like a rim or something. Yeah, I mean, this, the bamboo snare is kind of generic a little bit, but there's a reason it's generic, you know? Like, there's a reason people use that shit. It's because it sounds good. Let's see if we can like lo-fi this up a little bit. I might pitch it too. What's that clicking? I hear like clicking. Let's verb that out a little bit too. And maybe like a riser too. A riser, so you've got like a little bit of a moment of sign. Oh, there's like a blip at the end of this snare. At the end of this sample. That's weird. That's the click I was hearing. Okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And then what if I automate the volume on that down? Whoops. Volume. Down just for this downbeat right here. 
so there's no overlap. Nice. And let's do that here because there's a little bit of overlap there too. Just a little bit of decay on that sub bass. And then our little riser, and then maybe an impact as well. Riser, reverse cymbal kind of stuff going on. So this one's got a good riser and impact on it, but they're stuck together. So let's go ahead and grab that. That's it. And then we can we can keep the impact there too, but I want the riser to be right on the end of that. And then, whoops, fade it in. Put that bass drop there too, put the reverse symbol there as well. Yeah, this impact is a little much. So let's just keep the high end of that impact because it's very boomy. And then we'll use the low end of this bass drop here. Yeah, so both of them together, you've got the high end of that impact and the low end of that bass drop. Nice. So we've got a little bit of a riser there. We've got this snare. Maybe, maybe let's pitch this down. Maybe a full octave just to get that like. That's nice. That's cool. I think the drums should do a little bit of a, a fill coming out so it's not so sudden. Then maybe close the hi-hat right on the one. And then let's put like a lo-fi kick sample in that section as well. Just find like a low thumpy kick. That was not bad. We're gonna pull it way down and low pass it. Doesn't need to be super subby. That could be cool. I wanna, okay, what I wanna do is get all those chords tracked and then reverse them. So like, I'm gonna track them, I'm gonna punch all those chords in with a double and then reverse them as the chords hit. I think that'll be cool. Okay. Get the double for that. Or I could hit it, let it sustain halfway through, start fading it, fading in a reversed version of it. That's cool. This is a cool thing that I'm doing right now. That's cool because it sounds like it's, because it's so like perfect and edited that it's like barely a guitar. Okay, and then my idea, double all of those and reverse all of those. But I need to like fade the beginning of those a little better. And then we'll do the quick silent automation that we have on this too.
Uh oh, this is turning into a real song. Okay, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm I'm currently working on getting an EP together, and I really hope I can get this song on there. The video where I started this song has way more views than any of the other videos that I'm putting out right now. And thank you guys for all the support lately because my YouTube channel, I've never seen this much growth at this rate on my YouTube channel before. So thank you guys so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Thick Rift Thursday. I'll see you guys next week.